Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Angel. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates, and beautiful things happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation, and also Blender Zenap. And this week, we have lots of things that you guys will definitely want to see as it's been a long time that we had a full rundown of Blender updates within the week. And this is owing to the festive period and also getting busy with January. But either ways, let's get right into it. Starting off, Beacon 2 for Blender 3.1 has been moved from the 29th of December to the 5th of January, which means that right now, the Beacon 2 has actually kicked off so sometime in March 2022 we will be getting Blender 3.1 and this makes sense because of course there's a couple of things that have been planned out for Blender which we'll look at right now. So the folks at Blender Foundation have just released a set of strategic targets for 2022 in regards to Blender and throughout last year there was a huge set of improvement that we did get to see. First off was the asset browser which is awesome, lots of people love it. We've also seen Cycle being overhauled to Cycles X, the geometry node is here and also the library override and this year they're looking at more targets that would include application template so just in case you like to tweak your application however you want that is something that will be very possible in the coming releases of blender something else that we'll be seeing is override so the collection and object proxy system was fully replaced with the library overrides in blender 3.0 and the new system seems to expose some long-term standing complexity problems in blender and these are some of the things that they will be addressing in 2022 and moving forward there is physics so we've already seen geometry node looking awesome it is a beautiful milestone now the next milestone of geometry node is to support physics dynamics and this is one thing the blender community has been asking ever since geometry node made its first debut and it makes sense to see that the folks at blender foundation are actually working towards this so the idea here is for it to work in real time being able to handle interactive physics simulation and at the same time create that very usable node-based sort of system. So this would be able to support point-based particle system as well as hair nodes and completely replace the old simulation system. So whether it's working real time or working with the geometry nodes, I will just definitely fall in love with it regardless of if it's geometry node or not. I have always wanted to see a real time simulation tool come over to Blender. And with this as part of the strategy for things to be done in 2022, real time physics will definitely make me smile even more. And with that said, there is also some very interesting things that is coming to the texture inside. So the texture in coming to Blender based off this strategy that has been listed is going to be a combination of node based and mask painting. Like just think about all of the possibilities that this is bringing to the table. We will be having a non-destructive painting pipeline within Blender, which is just super crazy. Something Substance haven't really attained. It's like bringing Mari alongside Substance, putting them together, fusing, bringing that into Blender. Crazy stuff. I do love the direction that the folks at Blender Foundation are going with this new set of strategies. And you know, like everything, the next logical step is to sit down, plan a couple of meetings and discuss the milestone and priorities. And while we talk about discussing milestones and priorities, there's already a couple of discussion that is going on. And this thing gets to do with the geometry nodes, the rendering, and also animation and rigging. The Blender rendering meeting just finished about a couple of days back and you might want to catch up with Cycles, see all of the improvements that will be coming to site, that will be coming to Cycles, EV and the viewport, the rendering API, and of course some practical information. And this is for those who are into rendering and may want to come through and catch up with this one. You might also want to catch up with the animation and rigging module meeting which is uh, something that is very, very nice. So within the last and also the present meeting, there have been a couple of talks about the new graph editor and key manipulation operations. There's also conversations about NLA and at the same time, things that deals with keyframing and also a free mocap. So right here, there was a demo done by John Matisse that deals with a free mocap project aimed at making motion capture available with simple webcams. And this might also sound as something quite impressive to see. Now, with that said, there is also a very cool Blender Geometry node submodule meeting that also happened sometime within uh, last week. So for those who are into the geometry nodes, you might actually find this one quite impressive as a couple of nodes have been added, some nodes have been talked about and also some nodes are actually been teased. So this is also a very good read for you guys. So you might want to consider checking it out. And while we talk about nodes, we already talked about the fact that there is a temporary geometry node extrude branch that was just announced a couple of days back. Now that branch has actually been expanded. And right now it doesn't only contain the geometry node extrude, but it also contains the geometry node extrude and scale. But you know, before we even talk about this cool one, let's talk about something lots of you guys missed a couple of weeks back. And this has to do with 
the treaty compositor branch. So there is a treaty, comp probably we'll make a full video about this, but there's a treaty compositor branch that was released sometime and lots of you guys didn't get to see it. So let's actually take a look at what this does and also how you can take full advantage of this and start working with it right now. So what we have here is that branch. I'll definitely show you guys how you can get it, but it is just crazy. Let me show you guys what we can do. So you know how by default you have to render, then bring it into the 3D compositor. That is now a thing of the past because, you know, you don't even need to do that anymore. So what we have here is a very simple stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and pick these, raise this all the way up. You can do whatever, whatever you want to do. You can do that right here. And I'm going to go over here. Let's change this color. Let's actually switch to the rendering so you guys can see that. Select this, add a new material, and then turn this to green. But it gets even more beautiful. Let's drag out another panel and we'll switch this from 3D to Compositor so that you guys can see everything that's going on. So since we have this, check this out, guys. What we have is with this here, I'm just going to click on Use Nodes, move right in, and I will just, you know, go in, hold down Shift and Tap A, click, and type in the word Hue because, you know, we we'll like to do a hue and saturation sort of thing. And if I connect this, you notice we don't have any result. Nothing is happening. Now, the reason why this isn't happening is because we have not activated the 3D compositor sort of thing that you get to see within the viewport. And how to do that is very simple. Go for this render section, click on the drop down compositor, and that is all you need to do. So right now, you can start making that sweet variation of what you want. Now, I would love to see a situation where you can select setting set of object and work based off those object IDs. I think that might be very interesting to see because in that way you can now leverage of this and make like multiple colors of one particular object and just, you know, render these things anyhow you want. And the idea is just pretty wild. For those who like to get this and you want to try it, yeah, you can. So if you go over to the branch section, you need to click on all archive builds and that is how you can find it. Regardless of that, you will not be able to find this. And it's also worth knowing that this was released December the 28th of 2021, and there has been no update to this over time. And uh, hopefully this might make it to 3.1, who knows? And with that said, let's go ahead and try out the brand new patch for the geometry node extrude node alongside with the scale node. So with the extrude branch open right here, what we can do is pretty simple. I'm just gonna go ahead and get ourselves a pretty cool grid. Now we already mentioned how you can do this before. So it is extremely easy. Now with this here, I'm also gonna go ahead and scale this, jump over and we can make a couple of selections. So let's just go ahead and make a selection like so. So this is a selection we want. Just gonna go through and create a group. Now, the reason why we're creating this group is because we would like to use this group to do a simple extrusion. Now, if you don't create this group, you can also extrude, but it might just be an overall extrusion. So to see this in action, go over to your geometry nodes, click on new, and then we've already talked about the idea that if you click, drag, and let go, you can start searching for your nodes. So I'm going to go in and drop in that right there, connect this, and right now you can see that we are extruding this bad boy. This is great, but what we want to do is to extrude a certain selection. You can simply click from the selection and connect this right here. And from here, you can click on this button to get rid of that and then click and select that group. And in this case, you're having the group, so you can proceed to do a simple extrusion. Now, the beautiful thing about this is this is super procedural. So it means you now have access to doing lots of things. So if you like to extrude as an individual object, of course you can. If you like to use the edges to do the extrusion, you like to use the vertices, or probably you want to just extrude based off the faces, you can do all of these things. Now to top it all off, the folks at Blender Foundation have added the scale element node. So to see this, you need to click, drag, and now I'm just gonna type in the word scale, and we have the scale element. So with the scale element, I can plug this in, plug this right here, and we can start you know, scaling this. By default, this scales everything. And of course you can choose to control the scale by simply using the extrude group. So we've already talked about the idea that once you do an extrusion, there are two set of groups that are being created once an extrusion is done. So you can choose to use the top or the side to run the selection of the scale. Now it also makes sense that if you like to use your own selection, like the previous vertex group selection that we made earlier, you can. So to do this, you need to also rewire that selection back to the group input. And uh, once you do that, you can go over to the modifier section, 
And just the same way that we added the previous group, that is how you can proceed to add this new group. And once you add this group, of course, you can start doing all of that magical stuff. And this is going to open doors to lots of possibilities that creators will want to use to make their next amazing art piece. And of course, for those who might want to download and try this, you can definitely find all of these things within the branch builds. And uh, this is right here. It's the third one on row. And you can actually go ahead and check it. Now, there are also a couple of things that you might want to check that is currently in development as we now have support for virtual file names. Now, this is for those working with UDIMS, and this is a very interesting thing to see. There's also some more interesting updates coming, which has to do with OpenSubdiv. There's now an added support for OpenGL Evaluator. And of course, if you work with Alembic, there is an added support for reading override layers. Now, for those who are also excited about what is going to be coming to 3.0 sooner than later, there is a 3.0.1 release candidate that has been slated, but we don't know exactly when this will be released. Hopefully, before the end of January, we might be getting 3.0.1 release, and uh, this is targeted to fix bugs, as basically that's what most of these candidates actually do, so there might be some bug fixes for these ones. And if you're using 2.83, the 19th candidate release is coming. 2.93, the 8th candidate release is also coming. So these are some very interesting stuff that you might want to consider checking out. And while we talk about interesting things, that you might want to consider checking out the folks at blender studio have released the sprite fright sculpting advice now this is for those who are thinking about concepting in 3d so if you would like to concept or if you actually concept in 3d there's a couple of things that you would learn from this from how you shouldn't pose your characters the whole design for story thing this is just brilliant. This is a very good read for those who are thinking or that are actually concepting in 3D and would like to take some advice from the folks at Blender Studio. Something else which is also worthy of read is the illusion of simplicity from the folks at Blender Studio that deals with the Sprite Fright as well. So we all know how interesting the Sprite Fright was and it just makes sense to see that the folks at Blender Studio have released this blog to explain a couple of things from how their inspiration came about to how they dealt with shapes to how they dealt with forms and also how to dodge certain technicalities and work around complex images to make them look very simple the idea of silhouettes and also how you can play with forms in terms of blend shape to create a certain form of feeling at certain times when animating your character there's also a talk about how they kind of played with fake wrinkles so this is also a very interesting read he comes with a couple of technicalities and at the same time comes with a couple of to-dos and tips and tricks of how to run away from certain issues that might essentially be brewing when you're trying to create your next shorts. And before we talk about some community stuff for this week, it is worth mentioning that October 2022, Blender will be marking 20 years of being a free software that anyone can pick up. And for those who would like to read up on what Ton has actually written, there's a small read up for you and you might also want to consider checking out what the code looked like when it was within its early development in January the 8th of 1994. So if you want to catch up with the index stuff, you can also so go ahead and look at this. And these are just fantastic reads that you should consider looking at. And with that said, let's dive over and talk about some community stuff for this week. Definitely, let's start off by talking about the folks at Pixar with the release of Renderman 24.3. This is the most, the most recent release of Renderman and it fixes lots of bugs. Renderman, like I've mentioned before, is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And so if you're working with Blender, it is for free. You can download it. You can start playing with it. It's just awesome. You would also be able to use this for Mari, Katana, Houdini, and also Maya, if you definitely work with these things. And it is impressive the kind of things that you will be getting with Renderman. There is also another free add-on that has been upgraded for 3.0. Now, this is called the cube blocker and it is for those who would like to work with hard surface or for those that love creating hard surface and you might be looking for hard surface add-on the cube blocker is an amazing hard surface add-on that you might want to consider checking out and it is worth it it's also worth it that you should consider checking out the blender seems to sew in patterns as this is a very lovely add-on so this cool add-on will definitely get you some pretty impressive results and uh this is for those who love sewing you like to explore with free stuff you will definitely find this one useful. And right here, I don't think they've implemented for 3.0, but I do think that, you know, we did get last update sometime seven months ago. So you might want to also consider checking this and see if it is something that is worth your time. And with that said, let's talk about some community add-ons that you will be able to get from Blender Market. First off is Gravit. Gravit is a beautiful add-on from the folks at Zane Graphics. They currently do a percentage off right now. So you can go ahead and save up 40% by getting this. And the beautiful thing about this add-on is it takes advantage of the constraint system that exists in Blender. 
and lets you animate things effortlessly. And while we talk about things that you can do effortlessly in Blender, there is a new add-on that was just announced called the Easy House Generator. This generator add-on is currently doing a percentage of as well, and it is more of a modular base too. So what this allows you to do is to create interiors faster. And of course, if you're into creating props that you want to reuse over time, this add-on also have you covered. So you can go ahead and create your own piece, store them onto the add-on, and anytime you're thinking about making new models, you can simply go ahead and reuse the same pieces that you've made. It's having a percentage of as well, so in case you like to get it, you might want to consider checking it out. The folks at B Production have just announced the version 4 of the car transportation add-on, and this time it is coming with 13 brand new vehicles. So if you like to get rigged models, and probably you want to get these ones, you can actually go ahead and check it. And for those who haven't gotten this before, they're doing a 20% off sales right now. And of course, you can take advantage of these sales and get it. And for those who've already gotten this, you might want to come through and upgrade to it and get the latest version of this add-on. And when we talk about things that you might want to get, let's talk about VDB stuff. The folks at True VFX have released a brand new True VFX Fire Pack. The True VDB Fire Pack is a library of VDB files that you can use, and currently you might be needing about 24 gig to store what you'll be getting with this Fire Pack variant one. So this isn't the only Fire Pack that they have. They've also released a couple of them, and you might want to consider checking these things out. So in case you're looking for explosion, magical stuff, or maybe weather, you can simply go over to their storefront where you can see tons of things that will just make your next VFX easy. Some other folks that I would not miss mentioning right now is the folks at CityGen. So if you've ever wanted to create or generate cities really, really quick, you might want to consider looking at this add-on. This add-on actually helps you create cities really quick and it comes with a set of possibilities. It also makes sense to keep in mind that the city gen is doing a 15% off sale. So you might want to look at what you'll be getting. So if you want to save up right now and get this, I'm gonna put links to all of this in the description so you can do well to check these things out. For those who like to do simulation, the folks at RBD Labs, they've just updated the RBD add-on. So you might want to consider looking at it and playing with it. And this is very good for those who like to do some destruction stuff. You like to do lots of fracturing. You wanna take your simulation to the next level. This is something that is quite crazy. So this is more like it for those who like to take a look at all of this links to this is going to be in the description So do well to check it out Tell me what you guys think about this ones in the comment section And of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend And until I see you guys in the next one Peace